The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, I'm bringing you eight tips for better 808s. I'm breaking down all my favorite production and mixing techniques for improving the overall impact and sound quality of your 808s. The track that we're gonna be using in today's tutorial is actually something that I produced from scratch in a previous tutorial, which I'll put a link to in the description below. And it starts right off the bat with a baseline. And my number one tip would be sample and note selection. Now there are so many different types of 808s, long ones, short ones, high-pitched ones, distorted ones, uh, and anywhere in between. So you really have to think, okay, what emotion is my track trying to convey? The song here that I have is from making a pop beat from scratch. So we're not trying to be completely disrespectful. We're trying to be a little bit soft, but still impactful enough to work if a DJ played it. So let's take a listen to how the song starts. And we'll solo the 808 so you can get a closer look at what the sample is actually doing. We have a very simple bass line going. The only thing I'd say that's interesting about the MIDI is we have these little notes that kind of do like a flam at the high note. That's just to really emphasize the way that this sample sounds. One of my favorite parts about this disrespectful 808 is this kind of soft start sound. Normally an 808 would start sounding like this. Kind of with the clicky attack at the beginning. But to make the attack or the exciting part a little bit longer, I went ahead and actually reversed what you have going into it. So you have a little bit of reverse kick going into the forward kick into the regular 808. And that's not all the disrespectful 808s, but that's a really unique start that I like using because it overlaps well later in the song when you have a kick in there, like right here. Another thing that I specifically chose about this 808 is to do some very high pitch notes. Especially with pop songs, a lot of your listeners are going to be listening through a phone or a laptop speaker. And usually the higher the register the 808 is, the more easily it'll be produced in those smaller devices and be recognizable. I have some lower 808s here later in the song. And if you're listening on a phone or smaller speakers, you might not even hear it when it switches down an octave. Down in here. You probably just hear the attack, not the actual tail anymore. And I do that maybe as an effect for when a drum fill is happening, but when it gets back to the main groove, I want it to go back to the piercing high pitch 808. And I don't mean piercing in a bad way. I mean, it just cuts through the mix really nicely. So that's number one, sample and note selection. So that will always get you off to a great start and make all the steps down the road much easier if you can nail these. Number two is the levels. And I mixed all these disrespectful 808s to be at a perfect level at the default volume in the Ableton sampler, which is here, minus 12. I love when 808s just go ever so slightly into the red. I feel like that just gives them that extra little edge of loudness that they need. But if that's not the right style for your song, you can always pull it down. And you might think just by looking at this waveform that it's completely clipped. But one of the interesting things about how when I exported these 808 samples is in the 32-bit float format, let's take this sample for example, you'd zoom in and think that this would be completely cut off. But the beauty of 32-bit float is it retains the data that is above the clipping point. So when you pull it down, you don't actually have any rectangle waveforms. So that's another very... Uh, useful side tip is if you have 808s that are bounced in a 32-bit float or any drum sample that are bounced in a 32-bit float, they'll be much more capable of achieving 
these louder uh, like styles where clipping is a good thing. But back to the levels. Another thing that I encourage you doing with the levels is when you have higher notes, they tend to register a little bit louder than the lower notes. As you can see here in the velocity, I'll pull this up so you can see it better. As you can see, the velocity decreases as the notes increase. And like I said in the first tip, the higher notes kind of project louder through most speakers. You can always use that as an excuse to push your lower notes up in volume or velocity a little bit. So between the levels here in your velocity and the levels here in your sampler, like I said, minus 12 is my preferred, and that's also the Ableton default setting here. You can achieve really finished sounding results without having to add any plugins like you can see here. Another thing to look out for when you're scrolling through 808s is they all have different lengths and envelopes. And that refers to how quickly it drops off in volume or how long the sample itself lasts. To kind of set up this fun groove, I felt like a staccato quick 808 would be the right vibe. And I even went ahead and shortened the envelope even more by using the decay and pulling down the sustain. And you can see it gets even shorter as I pull it down. If I want to make it even, even shorter, pull the decay down. Or full length. So that's a great 808 shaping tool that any sampler in any DAW has using the attack, decay, sustain, and release. You might even want to decrease the amount of clickiness in it versus this. If you don't want to hear any of that high frequency attack in the 808, you could just push the attack up and slow it down. If you wanted your 808s to get cut off short, you could use the release. Or you can have them be long. But if you're using long release, it's really important to make sure that the voices on your sampler is set to one so your 808s don't overlap and create clashing, overlapping bass notes. Uh, so if you're going to do a long release, make sure you also change the voices on your sampler to one. Whether you're using simpler or sampler, you have all these same controls. You could just switch to it like this and find all these controls right here. But I'm going to hit undo a couple times and go back to where we were inside the simpler. I like to keep it nice and simple. So that's tip number three, envelopes and lengths. Tip number four is use contrasting sounds. I haven't really gone in and done the final production yet on this beat, so it's still the same 808 bass the whole time. But a trick that I really like to do to help differentiate maybe a verse section from a chorus is using different contrasting samples. Like I was saying, this is a very staccato short bass. Maybe during the chorus to help fill it in, I might want to add a longer lasting 808. Let's try that. Let's duplicate this channel and let's just get rid of all the MIDI here. Use the number zero shortcut and deactivate it. So now we have a fresh 808 channel. Let's go find one that's really long that we can use. That one's pretty long. A really easy trick to change the octave of your 808. And like I was saying with contrasting, the way that first 808 started kind of had a soft start similar to this sample. So maybe to make it contrast better, we'll make this one have more of a hard start. And you can zoom in and just drop this flag right where it crosses over this horizontal line. Since the kick is there going the whole time, maybe we could just slow down the attack a little bit to leave some space for that. And then for this, we could go up an octave. And so that doesn't trail off like that. Sometimes the release will mess up your pattern where it just 
continued over into the next bar like that, but we could automate that down very easily. Boom, turn your release off. A little automation too. Boom, back into our short 808. So it's just a very simple method to create a contrasting long 808 that matches the shorter 808 in our verse. Gives our chorus just much more of a chorus feeling. And there you have a nice separation between your verse section and your chorus section. And like I said earlier, these high notes are coming in a little bit hot, so we can just pull them down a little bit in velocity. Boom. Back into our next verse. So two completely different 808s from, this is actually from volume three, and this one's from the brand new volume four, available now at wholeloops.com. Do your 808s sound like floppy trash? Are you tired of boring bass lines that just don't hit right? Introducing Disrespectful 808s, the all new collection of 808 bass samples so disrespectful, you might just get offended too. Disrespectful 808s is available now only at wholeloops.com. That brings us into our next tip, which is number five. That's the fun part, adding plugins. Now, my favorite plugins to add to 808s would be distortion plugins, because those add saturation that create something for you to hear in small speakers. That was one of the first things that I was talking about, because that's always one of the first things that I'm thinking about when I'm planning which 808s are going into my production. You know, will everybody be able to hear this bass line? So let's add some plugins that will make sure that everybody in even small speakers or headphones can hear these low notes. One of my favorite plugins for that is right here inside of Ableton. And I'm also gonna show you some third-party plugins too if you're not using Ableton, but that's just the standard saturator. And I love to push it up so it sounds real gnarly and then a little bit of dry wet so that you're just barely adding it in over the original sample. A lot of these samples have a lot of distortion mixed into it, but maybe you're using some samples that aren't from whole loops and they might be a little bit more sterile sounding and this is a great solution for that. Let's say you're not using Ableton and you want to use a third-party plugin. A great plugin that I love is called Fuzz Plus. And I didn't discover this plugin. I actually saw this working with Cashmere. So shout out to Cashmere for the great suggestion on distorting 808s. This is Fuzz Plus. And very simple, just a distortion knob. And since this one doesn't have a mix knob, I like to hit Command-G to put it into a rack. And I know this is just a specific Ableton trick just to create an aux channel without having to create an aux channel. So if you're using another DAW, you would do this by putting Fuzz Plus on a send or an aux and mixing it in that way. But Ableton has this great rack shortcut and we can turn down Fuzz Plus. <laughs> This is doing a very similar thing to the saturator. Let me just turn that off so you could hear what the Fuzz Plus is doing by itself. Without it. Back on. If you want just yet another su suggestion inside of the UAD plugins, there is a really great guitar pedal that happens to be called the Tube Screamer 808. And I don't know if it was a coincidence that they called this guitar pedal 808 because it just so happens to sound amazing on 808s. We can actually use it 
inside this same rack that we created. We'll just turn off Fuzz Plus. We'll just make this channel green because the 808 plugin from UAD is green. And this is a monster for distortion. Let's play our Chorus 808. really smooth, pleasant sounding distortion. Sounds a lot like the actual guitar pedal that it's emulating. I happen to have one in my collection, um, but something about using the plugin like this is just way more convenient than rigging up a guitar pedal to my computer, even though I have done it, and I'll put a link to that in the description of this tutorial too. So there you have it, you get the idea. I'm using all these plugins in a very similar way, just combining distorted signal at a low level with the dry signal. Moving on to number six, this is a little bit simpler of a technique, but if you wanna just make sure that your 808s are in tune, drop a guitar tuner, Ableton has a great one. And if you wanna just be dead in tune, oh, I didn't realize my sampler was still detuned. Boom. I think this 808 was the one that I might've pitched up a little bit. Let's put a tuner on here and see. I can see this is like a scoopy, bendy up 808 and you could see it ends right on pitch, but the attack kind of scoops up, but that's cool. Yet another way that it creates contrast from the straight 808. And another thing that I like to use as a metering plugin that doesn't actually change the way it sounds is something like the Isotope Imager has this, or even Insight actually has a really good Let's do Isotope Insight 2, that's the new version. I just like to make sure that these 808s are hitting straight down the center. Boom. Just a straight line right up the middle and let's copy and paste it up here. Just two really great metering plugin techniques that you could do just to keep your 808s in check and make sure that they are where you want them to be in your mix. Two very useful metering techniques for pitch and stereo image. Now another actual mixing technique that will help the kick and 808 sit better together is some good old fashioned sidechain. And my favorite method for that is here in Ableton. You guys have seen me do this a bunch of times before and you just drop this on here. We could put it before all the plugins or after the imaging and tuning plugin, doesn't really matter. And we're just gonna select sidechain input from our kick. Let's turn the threshold down, pull this line. Just kind of find that happy spot where it works. Another really important thing is using this built-in filter here. You can cut some of the bass or use more of it. Let's copy this down onto here and we'll do it after all of our processing paste. I like putting the sidechain compression at the end. Finally, tip number eight, and I really think I saved the best for last because this is something brand new that only Ableton 11 users will see. Let's go into these notes and let's actually just take them and make them legato. I'm not talking about this button. You guys have had this button for a while. I'm talking about this button right here because what this does is create pitch bend points over each individual note. And you might be thinking, oh, well, that's nothing new. We've always had pitch bend and, you know, like MIDI control pitch bend and you just grab it and push it up. You know, we've had pitch bend forever. What are you talking about? That's nothing new. What's new is the ability to pitch it up to a specific note. So let's say we wanted to make this bass line out of two notes. So let's just go from here to here. Let's stretch this one 
and let's remake this pattern using this pitch bend. Boom, if you hold Command, it snaps to the individual notes. Mm -mm. Then we can go back down for this note. Something that would have been very challenging to do with the old pitch bend system here in the other tab. I guess this is part of the new MPE thing that the Ableton, Simpler, and a lot of other synths have as an option. This is possible within one long note. It's not possible to use this to string two notes together, but a very cool technique, like we could do it here at the end too, where we delete this note and just leave this as one long straight note and make it seem more like as if like a bass guitar actually played it and bended between these pitches. So let's listen to this. We could even do this note, the same thing where it bends back down. And you get the idea. This is a game changer for creating 808s in any time. I mean, this might be the best 808 pitch bending thing I've seen yet. That's why I wanted to save the absolute best for last, the new pitch bending option for 808s that makes it so much easier to target specific melodic pitch bends instead of just putting it in an octave and you know bending it all the way down or the default plus three minus three. This just opens up the world where for you to really express any melodical bends within one note. So that concludes my top eight tips for better 808s. If you want to get your hands on these 808s, I'll put a link to all the whole loops, disrespectful 808s in the description below and catch you guys next time in another tutorial. Peace out.